My talk today would be about the future and why it's really important that we stay relevant in the future. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. You have two options. First is take $100,000 and stay in Africa, invent and launch any business of your liking that solves many of the problems that we have versus free tickets, free visa to relocate to Canada and start a new life. So can I see your hands for $100,000? $100,000? And stay in Africa forever. Free tickets to Canada. Free tickets? Oh, wow. You need to leave now. <laughs> Don't worry, stay. In fact, I'm, in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to try to convince you that there's light at the tunnel and that every single one of us in this building has a chance of uh, being successful in whatever they set out to accomplish in a fast-changing world. Today, a child born today would be 30 years by 2050, which is 30 years from now or so. And the question is, what should we teach such children to be able to allow them to flourish in a fast-changing economy and stay relevant in the future? So to do that, we're actually going to look at three segments of human civilization, which is education, work, and, and technology. So many experts argue that we should be teaching children the four C's, which are critical thinking, creative thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Now, while that matters a lot, what's, what is really important is the ability to adapt to changes and learn new things and reserve your mental balance, which entails one needs to be reinventing themselves over and over and over again. So my point here is that Whatever we learn today, it's going to have so much impact on the jobs that, are going to, that we're going to have in the future. Now, I know many of us don't have uh, faith in Africa, and most certainly in Nigeria. But, but I think that there's so much changes that are happening in this generation that are going to impact a lot of things that we do, including education, including work, and including the technology that is impacting us very, very fast. Now, according to United Nations, in the next 30 years, Africa will be the second largest continent on the planet, and Nigeria would, of course, be the third largest country in the world, which is great. That at that rate, we're going to be expecting about 100% um, increase in population, which, of course, the majority of it is coming from Nigeria. Now, the numbers are impressive, by the way. Of course, they mean that they represent millions and millions of people that are going to be buying your products if you are an entrepreneur. But they also could represent some potential damage because they can either be high percentage of poor people or they can be high percentage of middle class income earners. Now, I like the later. And I think for us to get many, many middle, middle class income earners, which of course drive an economy, we need more and more entrepreneurs to create jobs, more and more innovators to invent new products, and more and more problem solvers to solve more problems. Technology has impacted our economies pretty much more than any other agent, more than any other uh, angle of civilization, which I mentioned uh, earlier. The numbers are impressive, by the way. When I look at the statistics that have been reported uh, of the internet usage, I found Nigeria to be uh, the topmost in terms of mobile internet traffic. Over, seven, over 70, 78 to 80% of Nigerians are accessing 
internet using mobile technology. And obviously, as of today, we have over 92 million or so people who access the internet in Nigeria. So a high percentage of them access it through mobile devices. And based on prediction, we're going to be expecting about 100% increase in that rate in the next 30 years. Now, while I keep using 30 years from now, is because it's such a balanced range of making prediction. If you look, if you look at, but back at economies like China and how they have transformed their economy 30 years ago, they grew at about 18%. Right now, as we stand, Africa is growing at about 7 to 8%. And I think that number is not encouraging. That number, it's, it's abysmally poor. And within this range, experts have made prediction of a very specific sector, which I'm pretty much excited about, which is artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is being predicted to add over $13 trillion in global GDP in the whole world. And what that means is that any country or any economy that takes part in terms of building artificial intelligence, invest in artificial intelligence, and get the best talent in artificial intelligence could be an economy that drives the most value out of that global GDP, which of course I believe many African nations can do it. Because it's the single industry that in the entire world now it's in active research, anybody could win, and we today, right now, are able to compete and take part of building uh, this artificial intelligence. So, we, Let's look at Dubai, for example. The Dubai government, it's leading in terms of investment in artificial intelligence. They put up the first ever artificial intelligence uh, ministry. Of course, they had a ministry and a minister. They had the first fully pledged artificial intelligence uh, university. And they are investing heavily in terms of businesses of AI. But Last year, as I told you, as someone said earlier today, last year we went into Dubai and along with a couple of my team, my friends, we started a company called Chiniki Guard, focused on AI. So we went to Dubai and, and we compete along including with Dubai and several other countries uh, across the globe. And we're lucky we emerged the winners in artificial intelligence, which is great. Now, why I'm sharing this with you guys is to tell you that opportunity, uh, talent is evenly distributed. What is not distributed is pretty much opportunity. And I believe that every single one of us has a chance to compete and stand in the global stage and win.